my name's Kat, and today I'm going to talk about the books at the top of my TBR. So I know for a lot of people, the longer and warmer days are, you know, reasons to go outside more. But for someone like me, who is in a lifelong blood feud with the sun, springtime is actually the perfect reading season. Especially right now, I feel like I'm in a really good reading mood and there's a lot that I am just super excited to get to in the next month or so here. I have two subcategories within this TBR today. The first is recent releases, and we're gonna start with those. Let's kick things off with To Best the Boys by Mary Weber. This is the Booksplosion Book of the Month pick for April. We're working with Harper Collins on this one. For those of you who don't know what Booksplosion is, it is a monthly book club I co-host with Christine and Jesse. Each month we read a book together and host a live show discussion. Anyone can join in, you just read the book with us, attend the live show. It's a lot of fun to connect with other readers and discuss something that we've all read together. I'll go ahead and put all of the details in the description if you're interested in checking that out. But yeah, this is the April book of the month and I'm actually still currently reading this. I will be finishing it very soon because the live show is this weekend and also it's just a really fun, fast, exciting read. Basically, it's a light fantasy story about a teenage girl named Ren who enters this competition that is meant to be only for the boys. In this world, the women are trained trained in wifely duties while the men are allowed to pursue higher education. And every year there's this competition where one lucky person will win a scholarship to attend this men's college. Ren decides to disguise herself and enter this competition in an attempt to claim the scholarship prize. We're dealing with themes of gender roles and also class as there is this disease that is affecting primarily the lower class, and Ren's mother is actually suffering from this disease, which is another reason Ren wants to pursue higher education. She really wants to find a cure. Like I said, I am really enjoying this, and I am really looking forward to the Booksplosion live show discussion. And again, all of the Booksplosion details are down below in the description. Next up, I have here The Princess and the Fangirl by Ashley Poston. And I have actually already read this book, but I wanted to shout it out real quick because it is the Booksplosion Book of the Month pick for May. We're working with Quirk Books on this one, and I am so excited to talk about this book with people because I read it really early. I got an advanced copy, which I read immediately in a single sitting. This is the kind of a sequel, but mostly just a companion to Geekerella by Ashley Poston. You don't have to read Geekerella before reading this, but I do recommend it because it gives you some more background information in depth and also Geekerella is just a fantastic book. But we are following two different main characters in this book, so it's not necessary, just recommended. In this book, we are following teen actress Jessica Stone, who has not been super well received by the very passionate Starfield fandom. And our other main character is Imogen Lovelace, who is a very passionate and outspoken member of the Starfield fandom. Our story starts off at a three-day convention where Imogen and Jessica realize that they look scarily similar. And when the script to the Starfield sequel is leaked and Jessica is blamed, Jessica and Imogen end up swapping places for a few days so they can better get to the bottom of what is going on. This is a super fun and adorable book. There's humor and hijinks and romance, actually two romances because each of our main characters has a separate romance. Be a little weird if the two girls who look alike fell for each other. <laughs> Though one of the romances is between two girls. But yeah, it's a fun rom-com that really celebrates fandom and convention culture. And again, I cannot wait to discuss this in spoilery detail in the Booksplosion live show. 
All that info down below. Next up, I have here Bloodleaf by Crystal Smith. And I received this book from the publisher HMH who I'm working with this month. I just talked about this in my last book haul, so I will link that down below if you want a little bit more info. But basically, it is the first book in a new high fantasy series. We follow a teenage princess who is pretty unhappy with her life. Like, she wants to escape her crown. And she gets the chance to escape when she survives an assassination attempt. She disguises herself as a commoner and she gets to make a new life where she is allowed to freely practice her magic and she starts to develop feelings for someone who she could never be with in her old life as the princess. But of course, it is not gonna be that easy to escape the obligations of her crown, especially when she might be the only one who can save her kingdom. I am very excited to dive into a new high fantasy series. And especially after reading so many books where like, lost royalty is trying to reclaim their crown. I'm intrigued to see kind of the flip of that and to follow a character who is trying to run away from the throne and the obligations of her power. Then I have here Romanov by Nadine Brandes. This is a historical fantasy and as you might be able to guess from the title, it is a retelling of the story of Anastasia. I love the story of Anastasia, so I'm always here for a good Anastasia retelling. And with this one, I'm especially excited because it's still historical, we're still in Imperial Russia, but there's a magical twist where Anastasia is trying to smuggle the spell that might be her family's only salvation. I love that blend of magic and history History, and also a good star-crossed romance, which this book also has. I'm also excited to read this because I know Nadine and she is absolutely lovely. And every time she's talked about this book or shared details about her writing process, I just get even more excited to jump into it. So yeah, I cannot wait to get to this one. And the final recent release that I have here is how to Make Friends with the Dark by Kathleen Glasgow. This book just came out in April and I received this copy from the publisher Random House who I'm working with this month. This is a more serious book. It's a standalone contemporary that deals primarily with grief. We're following a 16 year old girl named Grace who goes by Tiger, whose closest relationship has been with her mother. She's lived a pretty isolated life, but it's been okay because it's been like her and her mom against the world. But then after this argument, her mother dies and Tiger has to deal with the grief of losing her and also her experiences in the foster care system and just trying to find a place in a world that doesn't have her mother. I don't tend to gravitate toward more serious and heavy YA contemporary stories, but I have heard some amazing things about this book, particularly that the writing is gorgeous and it's just a very emotional and powerful read. From the reviews I've seen, this does sound like a heavy book, you know, it, it deals with grief and depression, but it also sounds like just an amazingly powerful read. So I am really interested in getting to this one. So those are the more recent releases that I wanna read this spring. And now let's talk about the theme of the second half of this TBR, which is five star predictions. I was staring at my bookshelves the other day, you know, as you do, and I was wondering like how many of these books are potential all-time favorites that I, I just haven't gotten to yet. So I chose a handful of books that I am pretty dang sure I am gonna love. Like, I'm almost positive these are gonna be five-star reads. They could potentially be new all-time favorites. And they've just been sitting on my shelves for a while now, so like it's time to get to them. Especially because most of these books are the first book in a trilogy that is concluding either this year or at the very beginning of next year. So like, the timing is prime. First up, I have here Scythe by Neil Shusterman, which 
everyone on booktube was absolutely losing their minds over last year when the second book in this trilogy came out and to be completely honest the hype kind of scared me away like so many people were talking about how much they love this series and my inner rebel was just like i'm not gonna read it <laughs> <laughs> but now some time has passed, the hype has kind of died down a little bit, and the third book in this trilogy is coming out, I believe, this fall. It might be the beginning of next year. Book three is coming relatively soon. And despite my hesitance because of all the hype, I do really think I'm gonna love this book, this series. A lot of my friends whose reading tastes align really well with mine have absolutely loved this. So like, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna love it. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a five-star read for me. Quite similar to what happened with Scythe, I have here the Cruel Prince by Holly Black. So many people have been raving about this book and the sequel, The Wicked King. And again, all the hype just kind of intimidated me. The funny thing is though, Holly Black is one of my favorite authors of all time. Like with Scythe, I haven't read anything by Neil Shusterman before. So that was more of, you know, an unknown factor. But I already know that I adore Holly Black's books. So why haven't I read this yet? I just told you it was because of the hype intimidated me. The third book in the trilogy is coming out this November. It was originally supposed to come out in January, I think, but it got pushed up. So yeah, the timing is, is right. I'm finally gonna jump into this series and see what it's all about. Then I have here Never Night by Jay Kristoff. Another book that is the first in a trilogy with the third and final book coming later this fall. This is an adult series. There's a lot of violence and sex. It is, it's not YA. And I've actually heard some mixed things about this book. Like some people really, really love it and some people really, really don't. But I think I'm gonna love it. I think it's gonna be a five-star read for me. I've heard that the writing style, the narration is kind of different, like it just doesn't work for some people, but I really love that kind of stuff. You know, like a non-traditional narration style with footnotes and stuff, like that actually sounds super cool to me. There's also an intricate fantasy world and assassins and magic and revenge. And I just, I, I think I'm gonna love this. I think it's gonna be a five star read for me. Then I have here Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. And for this one, I picked up the audiobook because it has a full cast and that that's a big selling point for me. Now this book sounds amazing and I've been meaning to read it for a while because it's, it's been out for like almost 30 years, I wanna say. But what is really pushing me to read it this month is the miniseries adaptation, which is coming out at the end of May. The trailer makes this story look so freaking good, and I, I want to watch the show immediately upon release. But I also want to read the book before watching the adaptation, because that's just how I like to do things. I do have a lot of faith in this adaptation because of how involved Neil Gaiman is. But yeah, definitely still wanna read this first and I will be listening to it because full cast audiobook. And finally, the last book I have here is not exactly a five star prediction because it's a reread and I already rated it five stars, so. Does that count? I don't think so. But it's my current read, so I want to talk about Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows by J.K. Rowling. So this is the Harry Potter book that I have reread the least amount of times. I think I've only read it twice, and I haven't reread it in at least the last 10 years. Since I started booktube, I have not reread the Harry Potter series. But over the last year, I have been gradually making my way through. I've actually been listening to the audiobooks, so I'm just holding this up for a nice visual. But yeah, last year I listened to books one through four, and this year I've made my way through books five, six, and I'm now halfway through 
book seven. And wow, did I forget so many details about this book. I've already cried while listening to this like more times than I can count. I, I forgot about some of the character deaths that have occurred and I just, I have a lot of feelings, a, a lot of feelings. But yeah, I am very excited to finish this book and then I think I'm gonna have to rewatch all the movies because it's been, it's been a long time since I watched some of these movies and, and a lot of them I've only seen once. So yeah, after I finish my reread, it's time for a rewatch. But yeah, I love this series. I'm predicting that uh, upon finishing my reread, it, I'm still gonna love it. It's still gonna be a five star read for me. So five star prediction, but not really a prediction because I, uh, I already know I love this a whole lot. But yeah, there you have it. Those are the books I'm gonna be reading in the next couple of months here. Actually, I've already finished one and I'm about to finish two more, so. I'm doing pretty good with this TVR so far. Good for me. I would love to hear from you guys if you are also interested in reading any of these or if you have read some of these books. Like, what did you think? Do you think my five-star predictions are accurate? Am I gonna love these? But yeah, that is gonna do it for this video today. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a wonderful night and I will have another video up soon. So I will see you then. Bye!